Good morning, everybody. Well, it is day three at the SEMA show. Can you believe it? Uh, already halfway through this amazing week. And we, you know, we were just talking about the Hot Rod Restoration Trade Show that happens every March in Indianapolis, Indiana. What a great show that is. And there is this uh, the Peterson, Robert Peterson Lifetime Achievement Award has been given to so many of the great icons in the hobby. Well, guess what? Guess who won last year? <laughs> Alex Exidius founder of the SoCal Speed Shop, and all, all around great guy, great passion guy, and some of the great cars in the hobby still going strong at all the car shows. It must make you feel so good when these, these cars are on, on so many magazine covers and pages and editorials and car shows or whatever. This, this, does, you did this, man. It's, well, <laughs> a lot of people did it, and uh, we all had fun doing it, and it's amazing what's happened since then. And. Uh, the Peterson Award was really special to me because I knew Pete from the time he was 18 years old. Yeah, so yeah. that was really special to me. And to, to share that award with Shelby and Parks yeah. and all those I want guys. to talk about that more, but obviously, I mean, you don't need any introduction. In <laughs> case there's one person on the floor who doesn't know Pete Shaforis, Pete Shaforis, the owner of SoCal Speed Shop, president, owner, founder of SoCal Speed Shop. And the two of you, the, the story of how the two of you got together is really great. I want to get to that in a minute. Okay. But let's go back to the award because that was such... An honor, it's, Alex. It just is, yeah. I mean, anything that perpetuates Pete's name and keeps yeah. that going yeah. because he was the guy. And There's so much we could talk about. Talk about the first connection and helping Pete and... <laughs> well, Pete start Buying Pete, an ad. I met How much him, did yeah, the first ad cost you? <laughs> well, you know, I didn't actually take it. I didn't have the money because Wally sold me an ad the, for, the day before in the SCT Racing News. So <laughs> we didn't have any advertising budget left when Pete came in. But he was this young kid. I mean... What a visionary. I mean, gosh, great guy. Just really was, yeah, we're really missing. Really really Help right quick, because some people may not have heard the story of your thought on, uh, from all the Pete and Jake's, the names you had, and how so-called Speed Shop, and how long it took Alex to think that might be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I was really frustrated with my company name, which was the Pete Chaporis Group. Nobody could say it. It was PP, it sounded like PPG. And, I was really, it was, I was, I'd had it. Couldn't even get a decent t-shirt design out of it. <laughs> so one night I'm sitting in my office and I'm looking at a model of the belly tank and I'm thinking, you know, there's a name right there. You know, and I knew the guys had tried to buy it from him and uh, no success. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe he'll roll over for me. So I called him up, we went and had lunch and he, just like that, we done deal. 10 minutes was over. And so when we talk about SoCal being uh, a, a company that can take uh, a younger company to another place, it's it's absolutely true because it happened to me. So it's just, yeah. just incredible. It's super. And and been wonderful for you. I mean, you and Wally oh were, were almost inseparable. You had you were such buds. Yeah. It was magic, you guys together. We had you on the stage one year for the McGuire's Award, and you had us all on the floor laughing. You guys <laughs> were <laughs> just just yeah. unbelievable. That was, that was and, for Bruce's deal. And uh, <laughs> we 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 lost uh, we lost uh, Wally. Uh, but you're already with this great friendship with... Uh... Yeah, tell him what you said oh, when you I, called me up when he I passed called away. Him. I called him after Wally passed away, and I said, you know, you just moved up to my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Wally. Pete <laughs> Shapors, Alex Exidius, you don't get any more significant, more, more important to the hobby than these two guys. Thank, Thank you. you. My Thank honor you. to Thank have you, you both as buds. Thanks again, bro. <laughs> Back with more of our Car Crazy friends in just a minute. Welcome back to SEMA Television out here in our car crazy stage. Uh, Guy Fieri, the host of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. <laughs> Man, and you, you got it better than I normally do it. <laughs> and guess what? It's not on Speed Channel. It's on the Food Network. <laughs> but if you give me a little more time and a couple more hot rods, I think we could, you know, we could bridge them together and have it on Speed Word Channel. Word has it, you've got a few rides at home. Oh, yeah. Now I'm a big car junkie. Yeah. This to me is like... I mean, it's like going to the candy store. You know, everything is here. This guy said, you got to come over and check my booth out. He goes, I got a ride I want to show you. I yeah, said, yeah. no, because I want to buy it. He goes, it ain't for sale. And I said, I don't want to go. <laughs> you know, I say on the show, oftentimes, we're all so co-spirited. And, and it doesn't, doesn't matter 
yeah, it, there are no differences in car guys. And you look at us, he's on the Food Network. I'm on Speed Channel. We're twins. I mean, do we? you can just tell car guys just by looking at them, right? <laughs> no, it, it's so neat to see what, you know, everybody has their own appreciation. Yeah. If it's a low rider to, it's a, if it's a, you know, four wheel drive to a speed car to a drift, to, you know, drag car, whatever it is, you, you come together here and you just meet the neatest people and everybody's got their own it's niche. Something? Yeah. Uh, I'm having a blast. Yeah, it really is. We could talk the same language and talk for hours. We've never met before. I cooked today. <laughs> we'll I, was over, I was over at uh, Carol Shelby's uh, event this morning. I heard morning, that. Cooking heard with Carol. Cooking with Carol Shelby. And you want to talk about tying it all together. You know, food, I think, <laughs> is the common denominator of all people. And I think that cars and hot rods just take a real slight yeah. second, you well, know. Just just barely. Oh, uh, but I'll tell you something. Yeah. What an what yeah. a awesome event. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so... It's so beyond transportation. I think everybody looks like, oh, you gotta have a car. But this becomes an emotion. You know, it becomes a, a passion. Yeah. I said today, I said, it's a quest. I'm on a quest for cars. <laughs> I have eight cars now, and I just keep, every day I'm looking for what's the next one. Talk to us about diners, drive-ins, and dives. <laughs> Well, uh, actually, it's a show. I go around the country. I drive uh, a 67 Super Sport Camaro, oh. which, uh, I mean, I could just be driving oh. around to flower shops. I mean, <laughs> you're driving a 67, go anywhere. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I do the show. I go around. It's on Food Network. On Mondays, it comes out, but we do a bunch of reruns. And my thing is, I'm a restaurant owner from Northern California. I have five restaurants. I cruise around. I check out funky joints. I have a, I have a statement that if it's funky, we'll find it. And uh, it's a great thing because it's a, it's a, it's an Americana tour. You know, you go to a town and you see fast food and you see chain restaurant and then you see that little funky joint yeah. over there and you go, yeah. well, there's a lot of cars in front of that, you know, hot rods. Yeah. And you say, should I eat there? Well, I'm the guy, hopefully, that's going in there ahead of time for you and yeah. checking it out and tell yeah. you whether or not it's good. Well, what is your cruising geography? How far do you cruise? Oh, I've been north, south, east, west, and in between, brother. Right? I have done, we did 125,000 miles last year. We hit, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean, we did 39 shows. We did over 100 locations. Did it is, really? it's bananas, and bananas is good. I mean, <laughs> we, we went everywhere, and, and the neat thing now is I'm starting to bring my, uh, my Shelby Cobra into the show. I've been driving the 67 Camaro. We're leaving that on the East Coast. Now we're bringing the Cobra into the show. Oh, <laughs> Talk about a job, man. People are like, I can't believe you get to drive okay. around and eat. Okay, all right. So you pull up in front of a dive in your Shelby Cobra or wh or whatever. What is the response? You don't even want to know. I mean, I get the, the head turned to the sideways. My favorite one, I was down in the south. I was down in the deep south, and, and I, think I, was in, uh, I think I was in Mississippi, and I came walking into a joint, and I bellied up to the bar, to the counter, and then people looked down the bar. I mean, just like in a movie, you kind of looked at me like that, and they, one guy goes, and he, I mean, quick to say, he was right on point. Look, and he goes, you ain't from around here, is you? <laughs> I'm like, just what? like a movie. I said, what gave it away? The tennis shoes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it's awesome. I have I have a, I have a fantastic job. And uh, can you tell me the most bizarre, the most most outrageous dive you went into? Your your experience of just this even blew you away. I will tell you, and it's so funny that you say this. In, in no kidding, it was yesterday. I was shooting in Sacramento, <laughs> California. I have two restaurants in Sacramento, and I was shooting a place called Jamie's. Okay. Okay. There's no sign on the building. No sign. I've driven by this place for the last 10, 15 years. Never have seen it one time in my life. It's brown shingles. There's no sign on the building. And the numbers for the building are made out of a paper plate. That's pretty odd. He is Guy Fieri, the Food Network, totally, certifiably, car crazy. Thanks. Next year, we're doing barbecue right here, right? Oh, right, right there. OK, all right, you got it, right you're here. on, you're on. OK, <laughs> back with more of our car crazy friends right after this moment. Welcome back to SEMA Television out here in our car crazy stage with uh, the only reason we're here is because of the guy sitting next to me, Peter <laughs> McGilvery, the Vice President of Communication and Events. And this is your idea of just do something on the stage and interview uh, VIPs throughout well, the week, and like, this has been a, it's a bit of team effort. But. Like like every bit of this trade show, <laughs> SEMA just rolls out the carpet. It's uh, the creative genius of our exhibitors that make the magic. Yeah, and uh, and really, yes. thank you for doing such a great job of uh, of showcasing our industry. Our, this this great it's, group of entrepreneurs has uh, has really come together this year and. Uh, 
and they've built a strong, strong show. And let's talk about that because the press, I mean, there's TV, have any idea how many radio programs, how many I, television shows yeah. being produced here? I've, I've lost count of the media that are, that are coming I mean, to the show. I this is your area. And you it, can't exactly, even keep track of No, it. and I was just up in the media center, I couldn't get in. There's, there's so many registered media um, trying to get get situated and file their stories, and uh, that's that's a that's a strong part of this show, and it's a strong indicator that uh, regardless of what you read in uh, in some of the newspapers, uh, the enthusiast is still out there, and they're still looking for what's going on inside the walls of the Absolutely. show. Absolutely, talk about what the bloggers are doing. Folks can get on right. online right well, now. That's a, an emerging media that uh, we're tapping into and uh, trying to. Uh, forge relationships with. So we've got a, yeah. a special section in the, uh, the media center, the Bloggers Lounge, where uh, bloggers can uh, uh, report back to uh, their readers about all the great products and all the great vehicles yeah, the, on display. The millions and millions of people who, yeah. car guys, who would love to be at this show can't because it's a trade-only show. Yes. So a little bit through our show, but through all this press and now yes. on the web as it's happening. Of course. It's a fantastic. Well, we, we want to make sure that there is, uh, there's a a conduit out to the outside world yeah. because because of yeah. the the tremendous interest in all of the products here um, we want to feed that interest we want to get people yeah. excited and yeah. uh, and yeah. and charge up and and get this industry going I, I, I wonder what so where would we be without SEMA where would any of us be without SEMA wow. I mean well, the, it's a camaraderie it's a shared passion it's a spirit yeah. without that passion and without that commitment and support um, we we would have we just have a good show, yeah. but uh, it's much more than a show. It's, it's, it is. Uh, it's, it's it is. really, um, it, it's about growing the business. If, if you're in the automotive aftermarket and you're not here, I mean, you've just blown it. I mean, right. this, I mean, right. it is more than ground zero. And it if, is, it is. And once the show's over, <laughs> if you're not taking a, a bit more home with you and working yeah. with SEMA throughout yeah. the year, through the research, through the education programs, I mean, there, there's some great yeah. stuff going on there. Yeah. It's not the same thing year after year. It's growing and it's changing. And we want to be a business service. We, this, this is the industry's association. They own the association yeah. and uh, we're there yeah. to serve them. Yeah. Well, you do it incredibly well. You got a great staff. We have a ball every year and we so enjoy the, all the services of Supervides year round. Well, Again, what would we do without SEMA? All well, you guys. Well, Thank use us, please. <laughs> Call we us. do, and Good. you know we do. Great. He is Peter McGillivray, Vice President of Communication in these events. If you love this show, grab him and give him a hug. Well, you're Peter <laughs> McGillivray, back with more of our Car Crazy Friends right after this break. Welcome back to SEMA Television uh, on our Car Crazy stage with Scott Webb, the Vice President of Merchandise at Pet Boys. We're talking shop with the cameras off. And let's see, what can I beat you up for? So we're getting some more products on your shelves or something? No more price increases, Barry. <laughs> no more price increases, okay. <laughs> and we've talked on this before, but mm -hmm. I, I think we could ex probably go through that process a little bit better. How do you approach the SEMA show as a buyer of, of one of the biggest automotive chains in the world? Well, you know, Barry, we've got 20 buyers here. And so they've divided and conquered. They each know their customer segment mm -hmm. real well because uh -huh. they work in the stores too. You know, our buyers work Saturdays and Sundays in the store, you know, once a month or yeah, so, just yeah. to make sure so that they know, yeah. you know, what the customers uh -huh. want. Uh -huh. And so when we get here to the show, we divide up and conquer. You know, our truck mm -hmm. guy goes to the truck area. You know, our import guy goes to the tuner area. Yeah, yeah. You know, the hard parts guy that's buying brakes and, you know, chassis and those parts goes mm -hmm. over to Apex. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, they're looking for the best <clears> products the best deals that we can go put on our shelves for our customers. Oh, so I, I think that's one of the great things about Pet Boys, that what differentiates us from, you know, the other guys mm -hmm, out mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, we've spent the last year remodeling a bunch of stores. Boy, you have. Moving you merchandise really in, have. taking merchandise out. I like what's out. going on in your stores. We are all about core mm -hmm. automotive. We're about a place where you can find things to accessorize your car. Um, we're going to heavy up on performance products, uh -huh. you know, for uh -huh. all the great uh -huh. people out here that have these wonderful You have cars. a lot of car guys in your headquarters. We uh, do. Not all headquarters are like that, I have to say. We've got guys that have low riders. We've got guys that are doing tuners. The guy that runs my merchandising visual presentation, 
He's got a fat fender, 54 Ford truck. I mean, it's just cherry pie. Cool? He just cool. loves it. So see, we're I, full of car guys. I look at it, how can you make, how can you come to SEMA and make decisions for what car guys are gonna buy, unless you're a car guy? You gotta be car crazy. <laughs> you gotta be car crazy. If you you're do. not, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> it's really evident in, yeah. in your team. Yeah, you know, I think you'll see in the summertime, we're gonna open up our parking lots. We're gonna become a place where car guys can come hang out at Pep Boys. You know, if they buy something great, if they want to just hang out with their clubs wow. or, you know, their wow. groups. We want to give cool. the car That's enthusiasts, cool. the car crazy guys, an opportunity uh -huh. to gather, to have some place that they can go that's other than the diner, that they can show off their cars to their friends and wow. to other folks that wow. are onlookers. Wow. That, you know, that's one of the big excitements about being car crazy is you go build this wonderful car and you want to show it to yeah, other people right. because exactly. you're so proud of exactly it. Exactly right. That's awesome. Yeah, we're that's looking great. forward to it. That's great. What do you think about SEMA? Wow. I've actually seen uh -huh. more new items this year than I've probably wow. seen in the past two or three years. Wow. So wow. for all the customers wow. out wow. there, get ready because that stuff's going to hit the store. <laughs> you're Absolutely. changing your product mix inside your stores? I hear you doing oh, yeah. a little bit. What's going on oh, with yeah. that? You know, we're, we're focusing. We want to create small store within a store, uh -huh. how I live in my car how I accessorize my car, how I wash and wax my car, and then how I repair my car uh, and maintain it. Uh, so we're, we're creating those store within wow, the stores within, wow. yeah, within wow, the box. That's cool. Exciting for me to see how well yeah. you guys are doing. Congratulations. Thank you. You're the best. I mean, no, you, I don't hey, know. you have Scott Webb for your vice president of merchandise. How can you go wrong? <laughs> I got a dream job. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Back with more of our Car Crazy Friends in just a minute. Welcome back to SEMA Television. Uh, hanging out here now with Craig Jackson. Barrett Jackson, Las Vegas, three weeks ago. Wow, all I can say is, wow. <laughs> you know, it beat our expectations. It and, had to uh, have. We doubled the gate. Uh, the bidders, we put at 1,000. We ended up with over 1,300. Uh, we had the cars at, at 500 max, 450, 500. We ended up with 531. And total sales, 21, 22 million. We ended up at 29 million. I walked in there and the crowds were as far as you could see. I had my COO, my president, my head of operations, everybody out there sorting them, adding the Bandelay Bay added, uh, they doubled the amount of uh, uh, ticket takers and had to. Yeah. Yeah. They came to Scottsdale the year before. They looked at it like, okay, we're ready for this. <laughs> then when they hit the beach, they're like, uh-oh. Well, <laughs> well it, it surprised them, but it surprised you. I mean, it how did. could you know? We don't know. I mean, everybody's like, you know, it's Vegas. Yeah. You know, it's and you not got the all best. The, you got all this bad economic news. Like, is anybody going to show up, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, the car's all selling no reserve. Nobody backed out of selling no reserve. The consigners at the end of the day were still very happy. The, you know, there's only a few cars that really set records, but. Uh, Any thought of shifting the hours at all for when, when the auction's going? I may bring it a little bit earlier. Uh -huh. Everybody said, well, don't start too early because everybody wants to go out at night. They'll stay because then they'll go yeah. out afterwards. Yeah. I'd probably end it an hour or two earlier next that's, year, I wonder, that's but I may a, a stretch it out a couple more days. Uh -huh. uh, the site, I'll probably try to condense it a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. How about your bidders? Uh, you were telling me at one point that a lot of these bidders were first-time bidders. It ended up at 52% first-timers. <laughs> and in Scottsdale, we've been for years at 40%. You think back, yeah. I mean, when we when we would crack 20% new people, yeah. we thought we were bringing yeah. a lot of new people in. Yeah, when you're bringing so many new people. You I do. mean, I talked, I, I walked through those crowds all those days, talked to people, I just, you know, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I heard the story over and over again, never been to Barry Jacks before. A lot of them never been to a car show before. No. And we're there and just totally taken by, that's growing the hobby. We're a supermarket, we sell everything. And right. car right. collecting is a very broad, diverse hobby that uh, yeah. everybody is welcome into. Craig oh. Jackson, thank you for all well, you do. See you the, in Scottsdale. The, the ultimate PR guy for the <laughs> hobby and what you do. I mean, you're on all the time and really put, you present the best of the best in all of what's going on in these oh, cars. Oh, thank you. Everything. Thank you, Craig. Back with more, even more of our Car Crazy Friends <laughs> right after this break. We're back with SEMA Television from our Car Crazy stage. Hilberg Johansson is from Norway. 
He represents Amcar, which is a car club in Norway. Mm. Um, and guess what Amcar stands for? <laughs> you guessed it, American cars. So how many members in this club, Amcar in Norway? Okay, American Car Club in Norway have 16,000 members. 16,000? Yes, they have. <laughs> That's a pretty good car club. Yeah, it's, it is. You know, uh, Norway is a small country. We have a, a population of four and a half million people. Uh -huh. So, so you can compare us with the Bay Area up in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, 16,000 okay. members in San Francisco. I, I don't know of any car club in San Francisco has 16,000 no, members. Neither do I. <laughs> but there might be one, but I don't know. Okay, help mm -hmm. us understand. American cars, American mm -hmm. car guys, hot rodders mm -hmm. in Norway. How did this happen? No, uh, you know, it, it goes a long way back. Uh, um, Norway is actually, you know, it's, it's a kind of a young country. And... and um, it, it, it started back in the 60s uh, with, with guys, you know, traveling abroad. Yeah. We, we had a help from, from, from what we call the martial help from the war. Uh, so we get to know the Americans and we had, you know, uh, we, guys going out on, on ships and all that stuff. And they, they brought home cars. And, and uh, especially in the 50s and the 60s, the, the, the American war cars was, you know, at the epitome, at the top. So you, you could immediately, you, you saw an American car, you could tell it apart from a European one. Sure, you know. uh, uh, easily. <laughs> easily. And, and, and you know, that started the, the whole thing. We didn't have all the, the, the facilities and all the roads and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. so we had a restriction for buying cars until 1960. And, and uh, you know, ev not everybody could go out and buy a car. You, you actually had to stand in line. It's like, oh, really? uh, yeah. Really? So, so we loosened up in 1960 and, and, and then it just, blew away and, and people started to import cars. Okay. And then we, then we suddenly bumped into a problem. Uh, you know, government rules. We, we, we have them all the time. <laughs> and um, one of the reasons why, why um, people in, in Norway rallied up in a um, club like uh, Amcar is uh, that government rules you know, were forbidding so and so on cars. And actually in 1975, uh, we, we had an actual car that was, you know, uh, turned around and shipped back to the U.S. It was a 1975 Lincoln with a uh, what we call, you know, early stage of an ABS braking system. Okay. And in Norway, we had a re uh, rule that said you had to block all four wheels. You had to block them. You know, so they couldn't. You know, they, we couldn't put plates on a 74 Lincoln, and that started the whole thing. So. Wow. Yeah. And, and basically, the, the Norwegian government has played this story over and over again, you know, in a different way. And, and that, that makes a lot of, uh, you know, memory in our organization because we, we, we speak to the government and, and try to, what do you say, uh, make things better for the members. And this year, I'm bringing over 83 people. How many? 83. <laughs> so uh, I rallied up 83 of our members. Are your members? Yep. And, and they are, you know, car guys, car builders, shop owners, and all oh that thing. Oh, my so, goodness. So we bring them over here and, and let them see what's going on, what kind of parts they can wow, buy, you know, wow. how they can put them on cars. And, yeah, uh, you know, incredible. In one way, we maybe we boost your economy, <laughs> and then we boost the interest in the Renault economy. That's so, right. So that's what we try I'm to blown do. away. I mean, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. Boy, you mm -hmm. are uh, one of the, one of the uh, great promoters of the hobby. Thank you for doing that. That's awesome. Pleasure being here. He is Hilberg mm -hmm. uh, Johansson. And uh, since 1995, come to see my show for Norway and uh, keep it going, baby. Thanks. Back with more of our Car Crazy Friends mm -hmm. in just a minute. Hi, everybody. I'm Alan Taylor here on the Car Crazy stage. Lots of SEMA news on day three in 90 seconds or less. Uh, lots of tire news today, starting with the new Ventus RS3. Extreme Ultra High Performance Tire from Hankook. This new tire debuts early in 09 and includes racing technology to improve dry grip performance by a ton, which is about 30%. Also today, Tire Profiles announced the new innovative Tread Analysis Tire Tread and Wear Scanner. Through a special laser and software combination developed in Formula One racing, tire diagnostics are now possible with the laser and software package making non-contact measurement of tire tread and wear both accurate and possible and reportable. Also in other news, another new product announced today were the Regen EV Shocks, a regenerative suspension system installed on a green Chevrolet Blazer. The Regen EV Shocks are hydraulic electric generators. The way they work, hydraulic pressure from the vehicle's weight powers a gear motor and a regenerator to recharge a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle battery bank stored underneath the vehicle. And lastly, this one's a little odd, the new infrared barbecue offering green grilling was unveiled today. 
with its gas-propelled grilling and smart design, this custom-built themed barbecue turns heads wherever you go, and it is the latest and greatest in green grilling. Order me a cheeseburger with extra onions. Also want to take a minute to uh, thank all the people that help us out here on the SEMA News and on the Car Crazy stage, especially the guys here that are right behind the cameras, because without all these people and all the volunteers throughout this entire place, we wouldn't be able to be here for you each and every week. Uh, day of the week talking about SEMA and SEMA News and the whole Car Crazy gang. And also thanks to uh, Fingernail Ellie, Eddie, and, and all the guys that have the weird names I can't remember. But really the reality is, thank you for watching. I'm Alan Taylor. We'll see you later.